May these words be to the glory of God. As we are glimpsing the anniversary of what we now call 9-11, we remember the people who, when called, left their jobs, they left their beds, they left their tasks at hand, and they went to help others. Public servants do not ask first if a person is of a particular religion or class. They care for everyone the best they can. I wonder truly if these people and others like them are best representing what God is calling all of us to do. We know now that the people who bombed the World Trade Towers were not devoted Muslims, as previously suggested, but common criminals hiding behind God and religion to commit terrorist acts. For no real Muslim drinks alcohol, frequents strip clubs, or kills others for political gain, as these people did. But we, as a nation, have vilified those who are Muslim, and in the back of our minds, they are all terrorists, not unlike after World War II, when we presumed all Germans in our neighborhoods to be Nazis and all Japanese to be kamikazes. Of course, nothing, nothing could ever be further from the truth. But we, as human beings, have such an incredible pretense for conspiracy theories that, of course, these all lead to hate-mongering. In the past few years, this has gotten worse and worse and worse, and yes, many people are trying to push back, to be heard, to right the ship, as it were. We need to be careful not to lop all people in one basket and demonize them in the, in the whole, but sometimes that's really hard to do. We are human beings, and we sort of want to be right. We want to be right. It's so easy to make quick determinations based on what we might see or hear in the media or from what somebody else might say or do than to dig closer and to check with our own inner self and with our God and what we know is right. Digging takes time and energy, and it can be risky too because some may not like what we're trying to do. For many of us, this digging deeper for truth and faith and peace is a lifetime endeavor. Whether it is to help others who need us or to stand up against injustice of any kind, we must keep at it. No matter how hard and difficult it is, we must keep at it. So how does this woman from Tyree model for us how we might be brave and strong. We know where Tyree is now. It is the fourth largest city in Lebanon. This woman is asking Jesus to heal her child, but she was not a Jew like Jesus. We hold Jesus as the perfect healer amongst all healers, and even he was hesitant to help this woman's daughter who was not like them. He said to her, let the children be fed first. Let my people be fed first. It's not fair to take the children's food, my children's food, and throw it to the dogs. That would be everyone else. He was saying that his services and his time were for people only who he thought were savable by God. But she says, sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. I think this was for Jesus, what some of us call a come to Jesus moment. That's a moment when we think and we believe and we change on a dime. We recognize, wait a minute, I'm wrong and you just might be right. We see ourselves through a new lens and maybe more educated eyes. This woman is now famous, although we have no name for her, do we? 
This woman is famous for teaching Jesus and the rest of us to see our roles of helping others a little differently. So we didn't hear the rest of the conversation, just like so many things in scripture. I, I know there was lots more conversation, but Jesus says to her at the end of their connection, he says, for saying that, you may on. Well, unlike most outspoken and uppity women, this woman was not just rewarded for speaking out, for having the courage to stand up to this healer, but Jesus was changed as well. Some of us need Jesus to be perfect and divine, and some have a hard time with this passage but I love it. We know from Jesus, he too need to learn new things. He is modeling in this passage. He is teaching us how to do better. Jesus was human and he too knee jerked when it came to judging others from a different culture and a different class, but he heard her. He knew what she said was correct, and he was changed. I'm not sure there's too many places in scripture where a woman speaks out to Jesus, and Jesus is changed. Now, as we fast forward to today and our lives, we need to ask ourselves, what does this say to us? Most of us don't have the courage or conviction of a firefighter, or a paramedic, or a police officer, or the pastors that are called in the middle of the night to respond to tragedy. Nor can we be like Jesus, we think. We give ourselves a pass. But why not? Why not be like Jesus? Why not? Why not? Why not be human like Jesus was? recognizing that our old preconceived notions might be wrong, and maybe we need to change direction. And that will not only change our lives, but the lives of others as well. This woman from Tyree was gutsy and fierce. Fierce is my new favorite word, by the way. I think we all need to be fierce, stand up for who we are, she was fierce, willing to speak the truth, and it had to be dangerous. She wasn't in a home where she would have been welcomed for doing this. She spoke out and spoke back. And now, in this small little passage, in this wonderful book that lives through us and in us, she's recognized for her courage. She talked back to Jesus, he listened, and he was changed. Remembering her courage is one thing, but will we learn to be courageous too? Will we learn from Jesus who listened and was taught by a stranger? Will we be open by the truth, no matter how uncomfortable? When I was a teenager, my mother used to say to me, don't talk back, don't contradict me. And usually that shut me up. But Jesus didn't say that to this woman. She didn't, he didn't say, don't talk to me like that. Don't you know who I am? He said, you're right, you're right. To be fair, we do try and sometimes we succeed and sometimes we fail. Most of us will say, well, I, I tried. I wasn't able to make a connection or to help where I was called. I had a friend once who said, it's just an excuse to not do the thing that will really make change when you say, I tried. To try and to not do gives us permission permission to fail and not really succeed at the task ahead of us. 
we can say in a whiny voice, well, I tried, didn't I? The key to real change is to be like Jesus and to say, you're right. I've hurt you by what I said, and I am sorry. What can I do to show how much I think my behavior and my attitudes have hurt you? To listen to the one we have hurt and to understand a new and different point of view takes courage, and it takes guts. And I think we're up to the task. Will we ever recognize what we've done to hurt another? Much less change our behavior. Maybe, maybe we'll be able to do some things. I will say that there is a step in the 12 steps of the AA movement who suggests that we apologize honestly to someone whom we've hurt. But they also say, be careful. Don't do it if it's dangerous. Don't do it if it's dangerous. Remember, sometimes we are to ask for forgiveness, and sometimes we are to give it, but we're to be smart about it. That takes guts, too. Well, the good news is, as we look back 20 years on that sunny morning, some things have changed for the better. And thanks to many who went to help, there has been healing. So yes, you can be like our firefighters and our service people, and maybe you are one of those people. And you too can make a difference in someone's life. No, our loved ones won't come back, but they will live in our memories and we honor them by our actions, service to others, Loving others as we love ourselves is, after all, what God calls us to do one person at a time, to be opened, opened in a new way. We don't have to look very far to help our neighbors, whether next door, at work, or at school or in our families even. We can listen without judging, and we can smile for no good reason. Have you ever noticed how you smile at somebody and they kind of go, what, and then they smile back? Maybe you made their day. So being like Jesus changes us forever in our hearts because that's what we want to do, isn't it? We want to be like Jesus in our hearts, in our hearts. I wanted to read to you a small poem. I don't know if any of you know um, this poet. His name is John O'Donohue. He wrote the book Anamkara. Um, he died too soon. But this book is called The Book of Blessings. And he says, and I think about this in our world where we're being asked to change so much. Delight when your courage is kindled and out you stepped onto new ground. Your eyes young again and your energy and dream a path of plentitude opening before you. Though your destination is not clear, you can trust the promise of this opening. Unfurl yourself unto the grace of beginning. That is at one with your life's desires. Awaken your spirit with adventure. Hold nothing back. Learn to find ease in risk. Soon you will be home in a new rhythm for your soul senses the world that awaits you. As we recognize this day and this time, and we know there is much to be said and much to be learned and much to be happy for, we also know that there are many things we are concerned about. So I invite you to remember to go to your God and ask God to be with you 
and to give you the courage you need to move forward, to do the things that you really want to do as we help each other be more like Jesus. Amen and amen.